All right. So we're back. Um, so did you find that interesting uh, having and useful having to describe your arrays that you elicited to uh, your uh, and fun and fun. One of the things that I was noticing as I walked around and listened to, was listening in on you doing it, was uh, a number of times um, I noticed that uh, sometimes you would take a pattern that was being described in somebody's array, somebody would take a pattern that was being described in the um, exemplar's array and do something with it. That is, think about how they could apply that to themselves or in some other situation. And I think that's just really wonderful. I was really happy to hear that and see that. Well, um, what we've been doing up until this point is we've been do doing a particular kind of modeling. That is, we've been modeling an individual. It's uh, getting an idiosyncratic model. There's a good word, idiosyncratic model. It's idiosyncratic in the sense that in the models that you've elicited um, and that we've been talking about, they uh, capture a lot of the idiosyncratic patterns of that particular person. And I think most of the modeling that you'll want to do is exactly of that kind. It used to be in the old days that, in the old days, <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, <laughs> through all of the old days up until two years ago, um, the party line was uh, um, that you always wanted to go for a um, generic model. That is, anything you wanted to model, you would find at least three exemplars of it model all three of them, and then look for the common patterns to create what's called a generic model. And that's certainly the way I always approached it up until a couple of years ago when I had an epiphany, which went something like, what are we doing that for? <laughs> because what would happen is, uh, by its very nature, when you create a generic model, what you are doing by comparing them is you're stripping out the individuality of each of those exemplars and leaving just as much as possible the essential bare patterns. Okay, that is useful. And in fact, that's what we're going to, one of the things we're going to do this afternoon. Um, because then you have a model that is going to be easier to disseminate, to use with a lot of, with many different people. Because it's not going to be filled with all these. Uh, personal idiosyncrasies that other people are going to have difficulty relating to or taking on. You guys follow me? So we're just operating at the, at the uh, structural level then. And so that's a really useful thing. However, in, in fact, most of the modeling people do, they do for themselves. Somebody's got some ability that they, that they would like to have or they know there's some ability they would like to have and they, they want it for themselves. And um, what I have found is that uh, when you strip out all of those idiosyncratic elements, you lose a lot of the richness. You can lose a lot of the richness of the ability. A lot of the little things that really can make it work and make it something that's um, uh, deep and effective. Um, so I actually recommend that when you're mo if there's something you want for yourself, that you, what you do is you find an exemplar who does it, who manifests that ability the way you want to manifest the ability. So for instance, if um, uh, you were modeling uh, the ability to um, uh, uh, keep, keep students in a school, classroom, engaged, you want that ability. Well, you might go into one classroom and uh, let's say you find two teachers, both of whom are good at doing that. That is, anybody who watches them or listens to them would say, yes, they are good at keeping the students engaged. You come into one classroom and you watch one teacher and one teacher is 
you know, very kind of frenetic and, and, and uh, nervous and always moving around, trying to you know, be in touch with every one of the students all the time. Students are having a great time. The teacher, by the end of the day, is absolutely exhausted, you know, <laughs> and you know, goes home worrying about the students, you know, and then comes, prepares herself to come back the next, the next day and give it everything you know, that she's got. And it works. Next door, there's another teacher who's also good at keeping students engaged. You come in, and this, and this person is calm, relaxed, moves fluidly. Um, students, of course, are engaged as well. Uh, by the end of the day, she feels fine. She's got plenty of energy, does not go home and worry. All right? Now, if we were doing a generic model, we would uh, model both of these exemplars, compare them, and find out what's the same about how they are organizing their internal experience and their behavior. And we would find commonalities. Pull those out, and that would create our generic model. Okay. Um, but then you could lose a lot of the, all of the other trappings, all the other things that go around, that put meat on the bones of that, of that structure that would create for you either one in, our, in this example, one way, one approach, one quality of manifesting the ability compared to the other quality of manifesting the ability. And so uh, what I suggest that you do is uh, if you can find an exemplar who manifests the ability in the way that you would like to, that is with the quality that you would like to have, then that's the person for you to model and you only need that person. Model that one person because you do want to take on some of their idiosyncrasies, some of the, you know, the, um, some of the idiosyncratic patterns that they have. Um, and uh, so that's the, the distinction I wanted to make there. Uh, now, uh, as we were talking about before, if you are wanting to model, create a model that you want to use across the lots of individuals, then it, it usually is a good idea to create a generic model. Uh, by having just the structure, you leave the most room open for people to find themselves in the model. The more content there is in the, in the model, the more you have to adjust to you. And as we'll talk about a little later this afternoon when we get to acquisition, that there's a lot of considerations when it comes to doing that. So generic model, we want to kind of strip away what's idiosyncratic and find just the essential patterns. And that's what I'd like to do with you now, uh, first part of this afternoon. So what we're going to do is we're going to group, organize ourselves into three groups of modelers, three groups of four. And um, uh, each, uh, what you're going to be doing is modeling the same thing in all three groups. And when you're done, we're going to come back together. We're going to put up all what patterns you found from all three groups compare them and see, do we, is there a model we can pull out? Is there a generic model that we can pull out? Follow me? Mm -hmm. so that's what we're going to do. The question is, what are we going to model? And here's my suggestion. Uh, I think it would be interesting to model uh, letting go of something that you're afraid to let go of. Now, I have other suggestions that this one is, doesn't work for us, but that's the one that seems interesting to me. That's something I've never modeled that. This would be absolutely fresh to me, and, and uh, I think it might be an interesting thing to know. How do you let go? What's involved? What makes it possible to let go of something that you're afraid to let go of? Now. So first of all, we need to find out if we've got exemplars of that. So what in this case, I'm looking for what we want to pick is, some, is one of those abilities. It's one of those, this is something that probably every one of us has done at some time or another. There's lots of things that you can model that are general human abilities, general human experiences. And those things are, in some respects, the most interesting things to model because they can be applied anywhere. For instance the ability to persevere. 
everybody has examples of persevering at something. The ability to um, be passionate about something. Everybody has some, probably at least one example. The uh, ability to um, make difficult choices. You know, these are all things that you wouldn't say, well, I'm an expert, I'm an exemplar of any of these things. But all of us have though, them in our experience at one time or another. So uh, anybody can be, uh, serve as an exemplar because you've had the experience of doing it. You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. Great. So what I want, what we need to think about now is if we can use that as our, the thing that we're going to model, the ability to let go of something you're afraid to let go of. You know, for instance, you might have, you could have, could have been an idea that you had that you were afraid to let go of for some reason. Could have been something you were afraid to let go of a home or a possession, could have been afraid to let go of a relationship or of a person, could have been afraid to um, let go of a plan or of a future, or let go of a job, let go of a, a, a present uh, situation you're in. You know, you're, you're in, you know, for example, you're in some unpleasant current employment situation. You know it would be better for you to let go. You ought to let go of it, but you can't. You're afraid. What will happen if I let go of it? You know, uh, I, will I be able to make a living? What will I do with my life? And so you hold on to it, even though you really ought to let go of it. You, you know what I'm talking about, those kinds of experiences? Same thing could be true of a relationship or an idea or a thing. So um, what do you guys think about that? Is um, that be interesting to model out? OK. Been following you, but there is one thing that's just a little cloudy in my mind, and that is, okay, we're getting into groups of four, mm -hmm. and let's say that we choose this uh, exemplar situation of uh, letting go of something and being afraid to let go of. Yeah. And I, I'm drawing kind of a blank at that point. Is each one of us going to? Yeah, I haven't got to that yet. I haven't got yet to that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. We're just going, is this what we're going to model? Okay. What will happen is, is then one of you then will be the exemplar. One of you will say, okay, I have an example of. So we actually, we only need three people in the room who have a good example or examples of letting go of something that they were afraid to let go of. But they ultimately did. That, that's part of it. It has to be you were afraid to let go of it, but at some point or eventually you were able to let go of it. Okay? So that's what we want to find out how to do that, all right? So uh, do, are there at least, who here has examples of that in their experience? You think you have an example. Well, yeah. you're, you're, not con you're not filling me with confidence, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, <laughs> yeah? Well, Rachel? Yeah? Well, I, I um, Okay. Don't, don't put me in a standby on that one. <laughs> All right, you're in standby. <laughs> You'll be on the bench. Well, I think it's really a choice. I mean, I can look at places in my life that it, the cosmic two by four says first. And then. <laughs> well, now. Now. Okay, now. Wait a minute. Shh, no, this is good because part of modeling, part, so part of modeling, the initial part, and in some ways, well, an absolutely essential part of modeling is being clear about what it is you're modeling before you go to modeling it. So is it an example of what we're talking about when there's something you ought to let go of, you're afraid to let go of it, and then something happens in the world that forces you to let go of it? Is that an example of what we're talking about? No, that's not. Then you're not letting go. So think about you're, you're hanging by a branch. <laughs> You know, and there's a difference between having somebody come, the branch breaks and you fall, <laughs> or you decide to open up your hands and drop. We're talking about opening up your hands and dropping, not that the branch breaks and you, and you fall. So um, those are the kinds of examples we need where at some point through some process, you came to that place where you did let go. Well, I would just say that you did let go. 
you know, I don't know yet till we model it whether it's a, I would characterize it as a choice or not. It just, it did happen though, that you let go. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a choice. You did it, you let go, okay? Uh, you got an example, Bobby? Okay, well then let's try it, all right? So uh, we'll need to form into groups of uh, four around our exemplars. Who are exemplars? You have a good one? Michael? You let go of a husband? Did you not want to let go of him? Good example, but you, and then I did, and then you did. Yeah. I believe you, yeah. I believe you, good. Mike, what's your example? Um, we were recovering alcoholics, and so at some point I had to give up alcohol. Uh-huh, and would you say you let go of it and didn't want, you didn't want, you were afraid to and you let go I of it? I was very afraid to, yeah. Yeah, and you let go of it. Yeah. Okay, good, we need another one. Oh, oh, Gene, yes. And? And was that easy to do? Did you <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. <laughs> Believe you. <laughs> okay, uh, I think those are three good examples. Those will be our three exemplars. So what I want you to do is to form groups around those three exemplars. And now, you're going to be working as a team to do this elicitation. Uh, I recommend that you, we've got two boards here. I don't suppose there's a third, but uh, perhaps some of you could, uh, one team could take some paper and stick it up on a wall with some tape. I recommend that you have somebody recording what you're finding out, the patterns you're eliciting on the page where everybody can see it. So you have a shared representation of what you're capturing, mm -hmm. all right? Otherwise, you're gonna end up in a, a mess, mm -hmm. okay? So feel free to, there's two boards here, and one group can feel free to take pages off and tape them up and take these markers. Um, and uh, let's take, uh, Let's about take an hour for the elicitation, all right? At the end of the hour, we're gonna, we'll come back here. At the end of the hour, we'll take a break, but after that, we'll come back here. We'll take a look at our information and see if there's some patterns across the three exemplars. All right? Maybe we'll come up with a model for letting go. Yeah? Okay, go to work.